Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. In this video I will be showing you how I made these lino prints that you saw in the intro and at the end of this video I will also give you a collection of Procreate speed paintings that I've done in the past couple of weeks. When I first came up with the idea of doing lino printing, I did not have the intention to film it since it was the first time that I am doing this and therefore I did not film the cutting process. If you want more information on how you can cut the lino, I will leave a link in the description to Rice and Wonder. She makes amazing um, lino prints and she has a very good tutorial on her website so I will leave a link down below. The tools that I am using for this project can be found in the description below but I do want to go over two products that I am very very happy with and that I really do recommend even though I don't have uh, much experience. I found um, the experience with these products very enjoyable, so I think I should tell you why. Every time I start a new technique, I go to the store and try to buy a set of the tools that I need. And one of the sets was these lino cutters. I bought the one with five different uh, cutting tools and for the project that I did in this video I used mainly two so you don't need much for just the basics and it was a really good price. I really liked the SD brand. The tool that you can see is actually a baron where you um, go over the print with. And it also serves as a casing where you can store your knives. This makes it really easy for me to keep everything together and tidy because these little knives can get lost quite quickly. The lino that I have used um, was soft cut lino by the SD brand as well. I am naming this because this is the only thing that my uh, art store had in stock and I used the A6 size because that was the only thing that was left. I had never used this before but I do recommend it over the um, harder lino. I, I don't really know um, if there is a special name for it but you have these um, brown coated or gray coated lino and those are really firm and very hard to cut. I have used these a couple of years ago, like over 10 years ago, and I realized that that is the reason why I didn't like it. But a couple of weeks ago a friend of mine started doing lino in um, the art classes we go to and for her birthday I went to the store and bought a set and that's how I discovered these soft cut lino. Okay, so that is enough talk about the products that I'm using. I am also using paper, of course, to make my print on. And this was actually very cheap paper that I bought at Action, which is sort of like a dollar store around here. And I'm actually very happy that I bought that paper because um, the art store that I went to did not have the paper that I wanted. Um, this block of paper also had brown paper that you will see at the end and I wanted to make um, white prints with brown uh, ink and brown paper with black ink so that was totally perfect and even though it is cheap paper the quality is still good I really liked how it turned out and I am not regretting it at all since the lino that I am making is A6, I wanted to make the print in A5 so it would have a nice border. 
and here you can see me measure on how I am going to place that in the center. If you want your lino to be in the center, make sure you do the measurements and afterwards I will show you how I use this to do um, to create a sort of guide that um, I set up to do my prints on. The inks that I am using are all water-based. I chose these kind of inks because one, they were a lot cheaper than the non-water-based and they clean up very nicely. So if you do happen to um, make a total mess, which you will, um, it's very easy to clean up. The next most important thing that you can do is set up your guide. And for this I had an acrylic block. I just happened to have this because I did a lot of card making and stamping in the past. And I am fixing this to my desk with poster buddies. They're kind of um, like a chewing gum that you hang posters with on your wall. And that makes sure that it's firm on my desk and it won't move. And for the lino I'm just using some tape that I put together so I can um, fix that to my desk as well so that the only part that is moving is my paper that I will be putting on it. This is also where the measurements come in that you saw me make earlier and since it was very hard to place the lino in the correct position I made a template with uh, the corners and I cut out the piece of paper because you know, the, the lino has the tape on the back, so I can't put the paper underneath. So I had to cut a part away that you will see me use right now. Once everything is fixed, I am testing it to see if it won't move, figuring out if the paper can be placed correctly, and yes, it's totally perfect. So the first thing I am doing is preparing my roller with ink, and I placed a little dollop on an a plastic plate. I, I'm not even sure where it came from or what it is. I've had it for such a long time and I use it for everything also when I'm, I'm painting acrylics. It's like my mixing palette and I am doing my first test print so I didn't use a lot of ink because I'm not sure how this ink is going to react on my lino. So I am rolling the roller over my lino so that everything is covered and the first thing that I noticed was that I did not have enough ink at all. But since it was the first print I just wanted to see how it would turn out before I would put on more. And also a nice thing to note is that this soft cut lino has two sides. It has a smooth side. And a more textured side and for this design I decided to do the textured side because I was really curious how that would play out on the print itself so here I am pressing down the paper on my lino and I'm using a Baron I bought this as an extra in the store um, it was very cheap when I got it and it does help out because my wrist started hurting during the entire process so I was really happy that I had this. You don't need this, you can totally do this without a Baron, um, but still I'm very happy that I have it. 
and I was really surprised that the first print turned out the way it did. It was a lot lighter than expected, which you will see in just a few seconds. Oh, you can also really see the texture of the lino in this one, so then you know what I'm talking about. See all the little dots? That's the texture. After doing the test print, I realized that some of the pieces weren't cut deep enough. You can see that, well, it's a moon basically, a moon with a bear, um, that the moon wasn't completely clear. Now, I don't really mind that it's not entirely perfect because it is a lino print, um, but it was a little too much for me and I knew that as I was going to put on more ink, it would be even more visible, so I decided to go in and cut away some access pieces. Once I've cleaned up my cut, I am just repeating the process, loading up my roller with ink, a lot more this time, and going over my lino, doing the print, and repeat again. Another tip that I can give you is if you have white areas, try to avoid putting ink over them. As you can see here, when I used the roller, um, because the roller is not as big, I accidentally put ink inside of the moon area and therefore it will also show up on the print. So if you do that, try to avoid the large big white areas. And so by the third time the print started to look a lot better. The black ink is from a different brand and therefore I consider this print a test print as well. And the same thing happened with uh, the first one that I made is that I did not put enough ink on my lino and therefore the print was too light. The prints that I am making here will one day be available at my store, but my store is currently in vacation mode due to the coronavirus that is raging the world and yeah, I will keep you up to date on my Instagram if anything changes, but for now they're not available for sale yet. Next up are three speed paints I did in Procreate and this one is an ink drawing, a digital ink drawing that I did as a practice run for um, a tutorial created by Shmoo Draws on her Patreon. I have been a patron of her since December I think and I really really enjoy it. Every Friday she gives a new um, Shmoo Draws tips and tricks uh, tutorial and this one I think in the first week of March or the end of February I think she created one about inking and I thought it was really interesting I couldn't wait to get started because this was something that I could do um, and I don't like to draw human characters 
because I, I have difficulty drawing human characters. As you can see, um, I originally had planned to draw a mermaid, fishing up a mermaid, and I changed it to fishing up a plastic bag because I have been really conscious about my impact on the environment lately, and I am trying to use less plastic, which is not always easy because everything comes in plastic, and if you order something online, it's probably going to be in plastic anyway. Um, so I made it more about pollution in a beautiful nature setting and <laughs> I made the exact same mistake that she made in her tutorial and she warned us about it but you know the mountains had to be in there <laughs> it just had to be the problem with this style of inking is that you either use black or white and not so much hatching. Um, I did use hatching but it was a lot darker than just the hatching itself and therefore it's difficult to create um, what's in front and what's in the back if you have several things that are supposed to be dark you need to make a distinction somehow and i fix it by putting a white border around um, the area that is supposed to stand out a little The next one was so much fun to do. It is based on the Draw This In Your Style challenge by Max Belushny, I think his name is. Um, he is the guy that created the amazing watercolor brush pack that I'm also using in this illustration. And oh, I, I used the pose and then all of a sudden I was creating different things and adding more things and asking my friends what else I could add and all of a sudden I ended up with this really cool Halloween style illustration of this guy just sitting on a bench waiting for god knows what. I actually wanted to put in um, like a bus stop sign like he's waiting for for the bus while he went like trick-or-treating or something um, but I thought I would overcrowd the illustration so I didn't put it in there uh, you, you can see me experiment with a lot of different things uh, in the background and then eventually it escalated to so much more and I really enjoyed how this turned out this was also the I don't know was it the first attempt the first or second attempt of using the brushes and I really um, am starting to get the hang of it. The third illustration is also with these brushes and it went a lot better in the third one. Um, but uh, I'm so happy that these brushes exist and I can finally create a digital illustration that sort of has the watercolor feel that I like so much in my traditional art as well. And then of course this hand, this hand, I hate drawing hands, I've tried it so many times, um, but eventually it did work and I got it down. So yeah, I'm very happy the hand worked. And I'm very grateful that I have these amazing friends with these crazy ideas because uh, the, the pie that's on there or the cake that's on there with the brain and the hand are totally their thing. Even the bats and the moon is um, suggested by some of my friends. So I'm really glad. I don't know what's been going on lately with my art, but I am also really enjoying the line art. And I think I might even like create um, coloring pages that I will put on my website. I, I already have some, I think, um, but I will I will have to update it so that you can just download it and then print it. So, you know, if you have kids, they can color it. 
would be nice. And the coloring that I'm doing here is so random. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I am trying things out, going back and forth, fixing things, removing things, adding things that I really can't explain what I'm doing exactly. Um, but I have followed a tutorial. There's a really good um, tutorial of Nicholas Cole on Gumroad and I bought it. It's five five dollars I think and I really recommend it if you want to know more on how to use these brushes in a very easy way actually and I have tried to use his method of working and it was really difficult for me to switch to the digital way of using watercolor even though when he explained it it was like oh my god of course why didn't i think of that it sounded so easy when he explained it and i'm very grateful that uh he made that tutorial i'm very happy And the next one is the illustration I drew in the first week of the Belgium lockdown due to the coronavirus crisis that's been going on around the world. And I was really stressed out, uninspired, I didn't know what to do. And then one evening I was watching Resident Evil. It's one of my favorite series and it's always the go-to movie that I put on when I, when I don't know what to watch. And I was looking for prompts on Pinterest, on Instagram, everywhere. And all of a sudden I saw this prompt, draw your character as, and there was a list of things that I could like morph him into. And one of the prompts was a zombie and I thought it was perfect because with the coronavirus I had been I have had this feeling like it, it was a zombie apocalypse and so I basically drew sort of how I was feeling at that point. I was really exhausted, really stressed out and oh, I'm very happy that I created this because this illustration sort of took my mind off of all the craziness that was going on and made me focus on this one thing and it turned out really great. I was able to um, use the tutorial that I talked about earlier almost to the letter. I, I did exactly what he said and it had the exact effect that I was looking for and I really liked it. I'm happy that I was able to draw and take my mind off of all the things that are going on in the world. I hope that everyone that watches my videos is safe and healthy and I'm currently still healthy, my family is still healthy, I think we're very lucky. Um, I hope that times will be better soon, although I'm very realistic and not so optimistic really but you know there are so many great people working on solving this on helping others and i can only admire them i can currently work from home which i am very grateful for i am a programmer so the only thing i need is a computer and internet and i'm fine um but a lot of people are out there trying to make the world better and I can only admire that I think that is amazing so thank you for everyone who is doing that thank you please be safe take care and I will see you in the next one thank you so much for everything